Welcome back to the show. I am Kachi Offi, and you're still watching Arise 360. So, a classic novel by late Nigerian literary, literary legend, Cyprian Quincy, is currently being made into an animated feature film. The Passport of Malam Ilia animated movie project is the brainchild of Nigeria's Magic Carpet Studios. The producer of the film and founder of Magic Carpet in the studio with me right now talking about Ferdinand at Dimefe. I hope you got your name you, right. You, you did, you did. I did. Yeah, <laughs> Ferdinand. So it's great yes. to have you on the show. And I must great say, I am so happy with what you're doing with the Passport of Malam Ilia. So you. tell us about it. You know, how did this passion I mean, there are so many novels. It's not just Passover Man and Ilya. We've all read the book, but then it wasn't just that. So why were you particular about that one? I think for me, um as part of Madame Ilya has the portrait of a global story. Okay. And I read it growing up in uh, secondary school. And even at that time, I would say to myself, if I have a chance to do a movie, it will be this. I didn't know I was going to be doing the movie, actually. It was just a far-fetched thought, but it was there. Um, so when we started, uh, we, we started running a creative agency four years ago. And then our interest in animation started to develop. We found quite a number of us in the studio were very big on animation and games. Okay. And so Magic Carpet became an offshoot of the creative company that we started. And then it was now focused on creating animated stories. Magic Carpet floated out of our conversation that we needed. And Passport of Malamilia became the focus. So we went to Ibado, got the rights, and then started the process. But it's a 19th century story. Yes, all it right? is. And it was though written in 1960, but the North is a rich culture, but not much has been said of it. And um, the global market is looking at Africa. I mean, after Black Panther and what we saw from Netflix and the Lion Heart, there is an interest in Africa and African stories. And what we intend to do is to be at the intersection of it, where we can also tell our stories from a very unique point of view. Now, there's a sense that the, the, the global world, not only Hollywood can come and tell our stories, but if mm -hmm. we tell it the way we want to tell it, it will be something unique. And um, I, we want to play in that space. Amazing. So Passport of Malam Ilya is, um, is exciting for us. We've it been is on exciting. It. But like many things, animation takes quite a bit of time. So we're on, but I think we're looking at getting it ready before the end of the year. So um, yeah. Nigerians, I mean, we have a lot of people already growing up as well. They have been sending us mixed messages. You know the funny thing? I was just telling you earlier how, you know, I love this book. I mean, I read it. But I had to work with a group of, you know, young people at a certain point in time. And they were just uninterested. Mm. But after reading the book more than once, I found out they actually turned out to really love the passion. I mean, this is a book that talks about love, mm. revenge, jealousy, yeah, betrayal. betrayal. <laughs> and you know, this is, I mean, this is a little extra for it's, you know, um, high school, mm. you know, kind of literature. So I'm really thinking, creating an animation, do you think maybe this will help open up people's imaginations to more of what this book offers? I think it has also impacted on the sales of the book. Um, as a studio, we ordered about 50 copies. Mm -hmm. I've been giving them away. We gave them to potential actors, um, investors, anybody who was interested. And I know a lot of people have gone back to read it. So mm -hmm. in a sense, there is going to be that intersection where um, uh, movies can be used to drive sales as well. Um, we're also looking at the game. We're working on the game as well, just to oh, keep people Pastor interested. Oh, Pastor Malam, a game. How would yeah. that play out? No, there is a scene, the Sanchi fight. Yes. So that particular scene ah. where you have the ghost, and yeah, we want to make it in. So it's going to be a, motor, a combat game. And you have to choose your character. Even Zara, though she died, mm. she's going to be. I don't want to give too much spoilers, but I know it's, uh, <laughs> you can have it. You have a chance to play there. And I think uh, getting kids interested in our history is something that we have to take very seriously Absolutely. because if we lose our sense of history, we would very well not even know identity. Identity and history that are inextricably linked together. But I really have to ask a question. You see, you just said something very important. You know, our history is important. Mm -hmm. Now, you would agree with me that a large number of the people that we have in secondary schools these days might not even know the depth of how much this book is about. I just know mm. the surface stories a lot of mm. times. Mm. So do you think maybe our educational sector has a really huge role to play in letting them know? Because, I mean, most government schools do history as far as, not all private schools have it as a selected subject, but a lot of government schools insist on history as a subject, even if it's an elective. Yes. So do you think maybe there's something that we're not just getting right educationally in terms of letting people know this is what happened, the, the Queen Amina of Zazel kind of stories, the, you know, situations like mm. that, the Biafran type of stories. Do you think there's something that we're just not getting right? I agree. I think there are many things we're not getting right. Okay. And one of them is the way we tell the stories. So over the years, the, the methods of telling stories have evolved, but our art, the art of telling it um, in the African way hasn't. 
So um, what we're trying to do is to also play in the space of helping to upgrade our storytelling. So what we're basically, we are storytellers. We just take an African story, make it for the global market. But here's what I think. I think, again, when it comes to education, it's not just what is taught, but how it is taught that matters. So I remember uh, four years ago, they removed history from the curriculum, and because they didn't have many people sitting for it in WIC. Now, what the government taught at the time, or the committee that recommended this, they felt that um, if people are not writing it, they don't need it. Yeah. But history is so important to who we are in such a way that you don't have to determine the quality of history by how many people are sitting for the exams. In fact, you have to ask yourself, why are many people sitting for history exams? Exactly. And maybe you then have to open up their minds where they have to bring in theatre, they have to bring in poetry. I mean, the dramatization and the drama, they bring it to life through art forms, so through spoken word. So what does this boil down to? Because, I mean, we're looking at a situation where... Um, people have been left out of schools from out of school for months because well, yeah. there's a strike. Yes. You know, and you know you can't really blame because they would say, look, I, I passionate so. By the end of the day, money has <laughs> to enter the pockets. That kind mm -hmm. of situation. Mm -hmm. So even if we're talking about, you know, we have to infuse poetry, we have to infuse theater. It all boils down to the teacher, doesn't it? So how I do we get our teachers to be more passionate about teaching this subject? Because I'll be honest, learning history for me in school was a bore. Mm. I didn't like it, but mm. it's something that I grew to learn on my own because I realized that this thing is actually interesting. I, I, I didn't like history the way it was presented, <laughs> but I love stories, so I read. Okay. I actually read most of the novels, not as recommended texts, but just seeing them lying around the house. Now, here's the thing. For teachers, I think two things we need to do. We need to look at the process of how teachers are created. So we have teachers uh, training colleges that are still outdated. So a lot of what they are studying and what they are practicing with is no longer compliant in the 21st century. Okay. So we need to rework the teachers' training colleges. And I think it's important as well, not just to create teachers, to look at their welfare. I do think that you have to bring the best brains to teach. So we have this situation where if you, if you can't find any job anywhere else, just go teach and you, you do fine. It shouldn't be an option for when you have no other thing to do. It should be that you're passionate because you're replicating intelligences in the lives of your children. Exactly. So what we teach them and how we teach them is very important. So we need to inspire our teachers and teach them how to use inspira inspiring methods to transmit um, their knowledge. If not, we're still going to have these gaps that we have. Education generally is a struggle. About 30 million Nigerian children are out of school. Now, they don't bother going. Now, if you put 10, 20 years to their age, you have about 23 million people um, who are still uneducated. Now, let's not talk about that. By the time they get to university, about 80% of those in school drop out. So we're dealing with yet another um, malaise on that, on that rung of the ladder. Now those that make, make, make it to university and even graduate, most of them are unemployable because maybe what they are even studying is not really relevant for the 21st century. So I tell my friends, study history, but don't just study because the world is looking for great storytellers. We want mm -hmm. script writers. In the studio, we're always looking for people who can write scripts and deliver in time. I who can really put a lot of depth to it. And it helps your storytelling when you know history, when you studied history. So there, we're just coming into the age of history and the age of storytelling. But our universities took it out before we arrived here. So they are studying other courses mm. that may not even be relevant to the 21st century world. You know, I agree with you because as an audio producer myself, a lot of times when I have to do um, a jingle or something for someone and they're like, script. Yes. And they always say, Akachi, please make it sound like a story. Mm. Make sure you tell a story. So I have to agree with you on that. However, I really, also, apart from scripting, which is a very essential part, there's also the area of animation. It's yes. not, so, I have a friend who did animation and he's, He's been struggling trying to get a job because it's like, Are you ah, kidding me? I'm not joking. Ah, they don't really, in, in Nigeria, they're not very keen on animation like that. They're looking at you mm. like, uh, hello, why did you study that? So talking about animation now, well, how would you say the market for that is in Nigeria in terms of job opportunities and even the demand for African or Nigerian animation? I think there is a huge demand and it's global. As a studio, we're always looking for animators. So I'd like to meet your friend, and maybe we can find something for him <laughs> okay. to do. So we, what we're trying to do, we're building the profile of our studio to reach out to the global market. So um, thank you for having us, sure. because we're hoping that uh, people out there can see and understand that there's a studio in Africa that can create. But the quality is very key. So we are very big on quality. We spend hours and time just trying to get the, 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 the texture right, get the lighting right, and all those details, they help us. Because if we can get the quality right, it will attract the market, and that's what we're doing. I mean, people saw the Passport of Malam, Ilya teaser. It's on YouTube, so people can yes, work. And is. they kept calling, like, are you guys kidding me? In Africa, there's still this animation. So there is a lot of... We don't even have enough animators in Nigeria. I don't think we have up to 5,000 
professional animators. Yeah. I'm not talking about motion graphics. I'm talking about um, uh, traditional anima uh, art illustrators and animators who mm -hmm. can weave the frames. So you have 3D, there is 2D, there is 3D that is more, um, you can use the software to do enhance much of the texture. But at the end of the day, we're coming into the age of storytelling and animation will grow. So as a studio, we have a training capability now. We've been training people in the last um, three months. We've trained quite a few people. Okay. And we're starting another round in March. And what we're right. doing is to contribute to the pool. So we want to expand the, the capacity of the, of the Nigerian animation yeah, space so and a lot of it. collaboration. And then the next thing is outsourcing. Because a lot of companies look to China, they look to India to find animation co uh, companies that can be affordable. Yeah. Now, we have more affordable than you can find in China and India. Now, Way more affordable. Know, apart from <laughs> Houses of Malam Ilya that yeah. you're working on, mm -hmm. I saw something that I liked. Uh, yes. I think it's Meet the Igwe's. Oh, yes, yeah, yes, I yes, saw yes. one of the clips. Although it, 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 it got stopped, you know, I really enjoyed it. So I noticed that it's not just the north you're handling, you're also handling parts of the east. Yes. So, um, you know, are you looking, what other kind of stories can we expect? We've seen Meet the Egoist, we're now about to see Passport of Man and Ilya. Mm. So what, can, what else can we look forward we're to? We're actually working on the, the Slave King. Oh, okay. The Slave King is the, king of, uh, the story of King Jaja for Popo. Uh, the slave that became the king. And he has an interesting story. We are working on that, and I think it's one of the projects will kick very uh, actively some, sometime along the line. But there's also funding, because at the end of the day, each of these projects, we have to syndicate funding from mm -hmm. investors and work that out as well. I would have, I would have, I mean, when talking earlier, you, meant, you mentioned something on um, Queen Amina's story. Yes, Queen Amina. After the Yellow Sun as well. Yes. So, you, I would, you know, those are stories there, that... There are many stories to tell, but mm -hmm. one thing we want to do, we want to also see how, so for us, we look at, we read the book and we decide and where do we find the most artistic um, um, wealth to explore. Because there's re what we're telling is authentic African stories. We want to reintroduce history to our Niger to Nigerians, in but particular with, the young generation. With a different method. With a, a lot, yeah, different method, the visual storytellers. Mm -hmm. And that's what we become. And I think uh, we have a lot of stories, even modern stories. We're exploring some modern stories that I'm not at liberty to share because there are different points of development. But, but we can just... Keep on watching you people Please, on keep, YouTube. Keep an eye on it because there's so much that will unfold. Amazing. Well, I can't say how thankful I am that you chose to work on Passport of Malam Ilya because even if nobody watches it, mm. nobody, no, I definitely... The world will. Trust me, I know they will because I'm definitely watching. But thank you so much, Ferdinand, Thanks. for coming around. And we're looking forward. When, when can you give us a date? Maybe just a little. Um, just after the elections because, you know, I'm running for the elections. Yes, like, you um, are. But you see, yes. we're... Out of, time. out of time we don't so have we so much time that. but thank you <laughs> thank for coming you. on the show all right then. all right well yes. we're going to take another short break now but stay tuned to arise 360.